We'll look at the talented female college basketball players looking to turn pro tomorrow. There's not much mystery about when Caitlin Clark will be selected, but the drama only begins there. ESPN basketball analyst Andrea Carter has more on the WNBA draft. Andrea, good morning. It's great to have you back. Good morning. You fully Thank recovered you. from the finals and everything? Yeah, barely. Okay, <laughs> just a little bit. It was unreal. I'm still yeah. gathering all my thoughts on the finals. Exactly. All right, so we know that Caitlin Clark going yep. number one, but want to get your take on how you think she'll transition from college to the WNBA. I think her game will transition immediately, and I think she'll perform really well. She's got good size. She has great vision. And the thing that people don't think about with Caitlin Clark, she is an incredible passer. So now you put her on the court with players like Aaliyah Boston, Kelsey Mitchell, and Alyssa Smith. Players that can score and that are natural scores. she's going to find them. She makes the right reads. She makes the right plays. Her vision, her size. And then the one thing Caitlin can do is knock down shots. She'll have a better chance at getting open shots now that she's in the WNBA because her teammates can help create for her. So there's going to be less expected of her as as far as the load that she carries, I do know the competition is going to be better. It's going to be physical. She's going to be going against grown women with what I like to call mom strength. That's a different <laughs> level. But she has the skills. She has the skies. She has the talent. And she's competitive. So I think her game transitions right away. That mom I strength is that. real, by the way. Mom strength yeah, is, yeah. let me tell you. Mm. It's, let me it's tell a thing. You. It's yes. a thing. Okay, so after Clark. I mean, the next picks can go a couple different ways. What do you see for two and three? Okay, so two, three, four, five, it's all up in the air as far as the lottery picks for the WNBA. For two, three, and four, so the Sparks have two and four. Chicago has three. And these are two teams that are sort of in rebuild mode that need talent. But as far as that talent, it could be Cameron Brink from Stanford. It could be Camila Cardoso, who just won a national championship with South Carolina. It could also be Rakia Jackson from Tennessee. Those are three players that I think could go two through four, but we don't know who the Sparks are going to take at two. Who the Sparks take at two, that's where everything's going to unfold after that. Do they take Cameron Brink first and then try to get Camilla? Do they take Rakia and then try to get Cameron Brink? So where those three players go, I think they all go top five, but I cannot tell you exactly where they're going to go. Okay, you are the expert in this. You've been covering women's NCAA all season long. Who do you have your eyes on right now? Uh, okay, so one player that has been up and down the draft board is one that a lot of people know, and that's Angel Reese from LSU. She won a national championship last season, made it to the Final Four, made it in this season. And for Angel Reese, the thing is, we aren't sure where she's going to go because she's a relentless rebounder. She has incredible energy. She plays with a chip on her shoulder. She's a winner. She's a competitor. She finishes with this unorthodox way. So you can't tell how it's going to translate to the WNBA. She has room to grow in her game. She's got to work on her jump shot. But she has a high ceiling. She has a high motor. So there's a lot of upside to where Angel Reese is going to go in the WNBA. We just aren't sure which team is going to draft her. All right. All right. Well, we love a feel-good story here on Good Morning America, right? So yeah. tell us more about Camila Cardoso uh, from South Carolina because she has such an amazing story and the basketball community really getting behind it. Well, I mean, Camila is, it's such a special story when you talk about taking a chance and leaving your family. Camila was born in Brazil. Camilla left her family at the age of 15 to come over to the United States to play. She played in Chattanooga, Tennessee. She went to Syracuse, had an incredible year at Syracuse, transitioned to South Carolina, transfers there, comes off the bench. She's sixth woman of the year in the SEC. Then she's defensive player of the year in the SEC. Dominates this season when it was finally her time. So to and go in the from, tournament especially. And in the tournament had out. an incredible showing. We're talking 17 rebounds, 15 points, blocking shots, just coming into her own. So when you talk about someone leaving their family, and she's a family person. She's known as a mama's girl. She loves her family. She's very close to them. Left them as a child to come over here and play the game of basketball to want to make it to the WNBA, and that's exactly what she did. Now she has the chance to be a lottery pick in the WNBA. So it's a, it's a really special moment for her, for her family, for South Carolina fans, and for just so basketball incredible fans. Incredible personal stories, the story of the draft, who goes two, three, four. It, I love that we were talking about women's sports so much. Amazing. And you were so good at it. Thank you. And Thanks. moms, strong moms. <laughs> of course. Mom strength. Mom strength. <laughs>